What you are about to learn is that there are a lot of high tier comps in Cataclysm. This isn't Wrath of the Lich King anymore where three specs reign supreme. In Cata, almost everyone has at least one comp that is A tier or better. And today, we're going through each class one by one to tell you what comps are the best in Season 9. Before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Kata using our brand new Skillcapped add-on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at Skillcapped.com. We've got everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from Rank 1 players, which teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered. While everyone else is trying to slowly figure everything out themselves, you can skip this process with Skillcapped, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. Join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. If you made the decision to play Frost DK, it's because you like to one-shot, right? You're not there to play the long game or AoE dot, no, you're there to blast someone with damage and see their health bar instantly drop. This is why your best comps need to center around big bursty damage and killing people in stuns, which means ideally playing with a sub rogue or ret paladin, usually with a shaman as your best healer. This is Cataclysm after all. Anyway, while these two comps won't exactly be high tier, they will give you exactly what your spec needs. Single target lockdown and very big numbers. Again, you're not really designed to win the long game and you need an explosive partner to end the game fast. Now, because Unholy DK is a much better spec, it's going to have significantly more comp options in Season 9. One of the strongest and most common DK comps at the top of the ladder, PHDK, playing with the Marks Hunter and then either a Resto Shaman or Holy Paladin. This certainly will be one of the scariest setups in Season 9, designed to win in the opener of the game with an onslaught of cooldowns and CC ready to tear down someone's HP. Unholy DK also has a high tier comp when playing with a Feral Druid or Ret Paladin, which swap explosive burst and control for raw damage and attrition. Ret DK is known as Vanguard's Cleave because of the success it had in original Cataclysm with Vanguard's Mez and Soda. Beyond this, there are a few lower tier options including fan favorites like TSG and Shadow Cleave, which despite their popularity back in the day, are noticeably weaker in the modern era. Unholy also has the option to play triple DPS, teaming up with a Ret Paladin and Sub Rogue, but this comp works significantly better with a Marks Hunter instead. Alright, now it's time to move on to the Druids, starting with Balance. Boomkin has a reputation for having some bizarre comp names, like Dancing with the Stars, Frozen Chicken Cleave, Spicy Chicken Cleave, it's easy to get lost in the sauce. But really, the best comp for boomies throughout Cataclysm will actually be the very unfortunately named LSD2, pairing up with an Affliction Warlock in order to get that sweet dispel protection. Balanced Druids can do an absurd amount of damage in Cata, especially in later seasons, but with every healer having a spammable dispel, it's hard to get value out of dots without a UA to cover it. Playing with a mage is totally fine too, but it can be a bit awkward since Polymorph breaks to any small breeze, including Starfall. No matter what though, playing a Boomkin does mean being a target in most games, so you're going to want to stick to playing with high CC classes like Mages, Warlocks, and Rogues. Now, if there's one spec that certainly doesn't need much handholding in Kata, it's Feral Druid. If you've been keeping up with the meta, you already know that Feral is arguably the best melee in the game, giving it a wide variety of comp options. Feral is lucky enough to have not one, but two S tier comps with both FLS and Jungle Cleave. FLS plays more for AoE attrition, focusing on maximizing damage and simply playing not to lose until damage is unhealable. Jungle Cleave, on the other hand, plays more around single target pressure, focusing on tunneling someone down while throwing super long CC chains on the enemy healer. If none of these comps seem that appealing, Ferals also have a high tier option in Kitty Cleave or some slightly lower tier options by playing with a Frost Mage or Unholy DK. Unfortunately, Resto Druid is arguably the weakest healer overall if you aren't counting Holy Priest. The two biggest problems Resto Druids face is having inconsistent healing output and being very vulnerable to swaps. Because of this, you have to be quite selective in what you play. Your best options generally include pairing a mage with either a Shadow Priest or Affliction Warlock, with God Comp likely being your best bet overall, since Shadow Priests provide tons of useful utility to overcome some healing weaknesses. Alternatively, you can play a few off-brand rogue comps too, but once again, looking to pair them with either a mage, Affliction Warlock, or Shadow Priest. We really want to stress that trying to play other comps will be a steeper uphill battle in a climb that is already quite tough. Moving on to Hunters, you already know that Marks is by far the best spec for this class in PvP for one simple reason, it does the biggest crits. The explosive nature of Marks Hunter makes it a great pair with other melee DPS who have punchy damage, especially in the opener. We already mentioned Jungle and PHDK as premier high tier comps, 
But triple DPS is also one of the biggest execution tests for any healer in Cataclysm, and Rhett Hunter Rogue is the best version of this comp. One comp we have yet to mention, however, is Thug Cleave, which is a dangerous setup demanding precise defensive play from any opponent. Mark's Hunters and Sub Rogues both carry huge momentum in the opener, and with the threat of double smoke bomb and ridiculously long CC chains, it is very hard to survive against this comp. Before we continue, we have a skill cap game knowledge test tip that you might not know about. Alright, so by now you know about those damn monkeys in Arena and their ability called Bad Manner. Yes, the one that throws actual shit at you. It's a very weird ability. First up, it says it's a disorient effect, but it's actually on the stun DR, but unlike any other stun in the game, it breaks on damage. Kinda strange, but it gets weirder. That's because it acts like a magical and a physical spell at the same time, and you can actually interrupt the cast if you are quick, but wait, it goes deeper than that. If you are a rogue, you can cloak it, but shamans can't ground it. Warriors can intervene it, but paladins can't bop it. What the hell is going on? PvP is kinda weird, and if you want to learn some more game knowledge, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. Anyway, back to the video. Just like hunters, you should expect to see tons of mages on the top of the ladder since they too have access to multiple high tier comps. For the most part, fire and frost are fairly interchangeable. There are some exceptions we will get to in a bit, but any fire mage will definitely find success playing MLS, God Comp, or RMP of course. MLS and God Comp play like classic wizard cleaves for the most part, blasting the enemy team down and zoning out players with CC. The key difference is that playing God Comp gives you the ability to do setups, especially on enemy healers with Hammer of Justice. Again, Frost Mage is more or less a substitute for fire in any of these major comps, with RMP being its preferred option. With the nerfs to Hunter Pet dismissing, RMP got a passive buff as Mark's Hunters are one of the toughest matchups for mages. Cataclysm is one expansion where coordinated 3-2-1 goes are possible for RMP thanks to the multitude of instant CC options available, and because of the burst damage that Frost Mages and Sub Rogues provide, virtually anyone can be a kill target. But if RMP isn't your thing, the next best option is likely MLS, where once again, your win condition is to play the long game, zoning the enemy team out with triangle positioning, and then playing to not lose. Next up, we have our two paladin specs starting with Holy. Holy is a specialist in different types of cleaves, either playing double melee to support the uptime of their team, or playing with double caster to help set up kills with Hammer of Justice. Because of this, paladins will find most of their success playing Kitty Cleave, PHDK, or God Comp. Kitty Cleave and PHDK will be more inclined to press W, and your job will be to efficiently trade your CDs to carry momentum. Holy Paladins will do really well into other melee cleaves, but can struggle against wizards who do massive AoE pressure, but since melee cleaves will likely be more popular in Season 9, this weakness will not be too punishing. Rhett is also a support specialist in Cataclysm, having a bunch of utility and off healing to carry momentum in comps that simply want to press W. Rhett's will work best in cleaves like Rhett DK and Rhett Hunter, and can definitely find success in the strongest version of triple DPS, playing with a sub rogue and Mark's Hunter. Rhett Hunter will play more around long CC chains on enemy healers, but virtually every other Rhett comp works best by selecting one target and then training it down. Red DK is exceptionally good at killing healers, and you will definitely find yourself saying, train the blue when playing this comp. Now we have our two priest specs, starting with Disc, who has been indirectly mentioned a few times so far. Disc Priest is a great offensive support healer thanks to Psychic Scream, which can easily swing momentum in combination with punchy burst damage and cross CC coming from their teammates. The main problem with Disc is that it can struggle with healing, which is why it works best in comps that can keep up tempo for a long period of time. This means playing with comps that have high control or lots of off healing. Your best bets are going to be setups like Jungle Cleave or Ret DK. And if cleaving isn't your thing, then RMP is obviously a great option for Disc, sacrificing consistent tempo for bigger momentum swings during setups. As we've mentioned a few times on this channel, Kata Shadow Priest is truly a jack of all trades, but master of none. It offers a very well-rounded toolkit, having a good balance of spread pressure and single target burst, some of the best cross CC potential in the game, and one of the strongest utility toolkits to support their team. Shadow Priests work best in comps that can complement different parts of its diverse toolkit, either playing Shadow Play for AoE spread pressure and more dispel protection, or leaning into setup based comps like RPS or God Comp. Any of these comps are going to give you exactly what you need to fulfill your role as the supporting caster. As the best melee in the game with a mortal strike effect, Sub Rogue is another spec with tons of high tier comp options, including some of the best overall comps in the game. RLS, RMP, Triple DPS, Thug Cleave, there are tons of flavors of comps you can fit into, all with their own niche. 
On one end of the spectrum, you have RLS, a comp designed to win from attrition. The spread pressure from the Warlock gives you tons of freedom on who you can attack, and it's truly up to you to carve your own path to victory. On the other end of the spectrum are comps like Triple DPS and even Thug Cleave, where you rely on explosive coordinated damage to win. Somewhere in the middle is RMP, which of course relies on coordinated damage, but with the extra element of control and slightly more flexibility for swapping. In any case, each flavor of Rogue Comp offers something unique, so be ready to adapt your playstyle accordingly. Now it's time to move on to Shaman, starting with one of the weakest specs in the game, Elemental. Ellie is severely limited in Cataclysm, considering every healer now has access to a magic to spell, making those Lava Burst combos harder to pull off. Combine this with the fact that Ellie is a very squishy target, especially in a melee, you will find yourself very limited to one or two comps in particular. Your best bet is to pair with an Affliction Warlock and a Holy Paladin, which will help cover both of these weaknesses. Unfortunately, Enhancement Shaman is also a quite limited spec in Cataclysm. While it has a ton of tools designed to harass casters, Enhancement Shamans themselves are still fairly squishy, requiring the defensive support of a Holy Paladin in order to press W. It shouldn't come as a surprise that your best comp option will be Turbo Cleave in Season 9, as it's the best season overall for Warriors. And with the support of Freedom from a Holy Paladin, you can expect to have high uptime, especially since Earthbind Totem also removes snare effects. Alternatively, you could play with an Unholy DK as a more punchier option, which will have huge momentum in the opener with a combination of Gargoyle and Wolves. By a long shot, Resto Shaman is the most flexible spec in Cataclysm. It's simply that much better than any other healers and can heal virtually any comp. Of course, there are going to be comps that are better than others, including FLS, RLS, and Jungle Cleave to name a few S-tier options, and of course, Thug Cleave, MLS, and Hunter DK a half-tier below. Resto Shaman simply has the best passive healing in the game, being far less punished by long CC chains and even being quite sturdy even when getting trained. And thanks to Grounding Totem and Wind Shear, Shamans have more disruptive tools than any other healer for ensuring their team can avoid CC and stay offensive. So if you're blessed enough to play Resto Shaman, the World of Warcraft is definitely your oyster. As we're reaching the end of this video, we have another highly versatile spec with Affliction Warlock. Due to the nature of spread pressure being actually relevant in this expansion, it makes sense that the spec with the best AoE damage would gravitate towards the top. When playing with a melee, Affliction Warlocks give their partner unlimited freedom in who to attack, allowing comps like FLS and RLS to not only be quite dominant, but fairly straightforward to play. Simply dot everything and let your melee do some stunning while you coil and blanket spell lock. And since Affliction Warlocks have the strongest dispel protection in the game, they will mesh well with virtually any caster DPS, especially those who are also reliant on dots, making comps like Fire MLS and Shadowplay appealing high tier options. No matter what though, finding success as Affliction Warlock will require you to maximize damage while making smart defensive plays to drag matches into the late game where damage becomes harder to heal. For our final major spec in Cataclysm, we have Arms Warrior. You can kind of think of Warrior like a budget sub rogue. Any high tier comp with a rogue can instead have a warrior and be at least a tier or two lower. The one exception to that rule is Kitty Cleave, which is arguably the best option for Warrior in Season 9. This comp relies heavily on high single target damage and has a fair amount of control with stuns, cyclones, and even blanket silences thanks to gag order. Beyond this, you once again play most rogue comps, playing with a hunter in KFC or pairing up with a warlock for WLS. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go, be sure to check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you'll climb at least 400 plus rating while actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.